it's safe to say that the Tour de France is defined by its climbs because it's there that the race is generally won or lost. And so we thought we would take a look at five of the most famous, toughest and most iconic climbs along this year's route. From some that are so new they've literally been paved for the Tour de France to some of the oldest and most iconic climbs in the world of cycling. And we would like you to get involved in this. Which are the climbs you're most looking forward to watching at this year's event? Let us know in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and turn your notifications on. That way you will be informed every time we release some content throughout July. The most famous and most iconic climb at the Tour de France, and probably in cycling in general, has to be Alpe d'Huez. It just holds a mythical place in our sport. It was first used at the Tour de France back in 1952, when it was also, in fact, the first ever mountaintop finish at the race. Each of the 21 hairpin bends which make up this climb are named after previous winners, which makes climbing it a little bit like a journey back through the history of cycling. Now, despite its length and its quite fearsome gradient, Alpe d'Huez is probably best known for the fans at the roadside, and in particular, Dutch Corner. Every time Alpe d'Huez is included at the Tour de France, thousands of Dutch fans descend on corner number seven, and it's safe to say they've generally been partying for a few days before the riders even get there. However, when they ride through that tunnel of orange full of noise and full of smoke, it's some of the most stunning images that we get in our sport. No climb has featured more at the Tour de France than the Col de Tourmalet. In fact, today it's been included no less than 85 times on the route. The first time was all the way back in 1910, and there, famously, the first rider across the summit was Octave Lapide. And when he saw some officials on looking at the summit, he said to them, Vous êtes des assassins. This year the race tackles the Tourmalet from the eastern side, which means it averages 7.3% for 17.1 kilometers and tops out at 2,115 meters above sea level, which means that it is currently the highest paved mountain road in the Pyrenees, although that will change once they pave the Col de Porte. This year it features midway through stage 19, which is the final mountain day of the race, from Lourdes to La Ronde. This climb is so new, it's not even fully paved yet. 16 kilometers long with an average gradient of 8.7%, the Col de Porte will be one of the hardest climbs that the Tour de France has ever seen. And with its summit at 2,215 meters above sea level, this year's Col de Porte also marks the souvenir Henri de Grange, which is the prize given to the first rider across the highest summit of each year's race. The climb to the Col de Porte initially follows the route of the more traditional Tour de France climb, which is the Col d'Adé. Until that is, they get to the village of Espiord, at which point the road splits, and then over the next nine kilometers to the summit, which are particularly narrow, it almost constantly switches between tarmac and gravel. Although we are assured that by the time the Tour de France gets to town, it will be paved the whole way. This year, it features as the finish of what is probably the most hotly anticipated stage of this year's race. Stage 17, starting in Bannier de Luchon, then going over the Perigude, the Col d'Adé, and finally the Col de Porte. Will the Porte define the winner of this year's Tour de France? Could well do. The Plateau de Glière is yet another brand new climb on the Tour de France this year, but it has a very different feel to almost any other climb that's come before. Now it's hit the headlines because of a short gravel section which comes over the top, but the real story here is how hard the climb itself is. It might only be six kilometers long, but the average gradient is 11.2%. The road itself is pretty narrow the whole way and it's also particularly rough in terms of its surface which only adds to the difficulties that the rider will face
place when they head up the Plateau de Glier. The two kilometre section of gravel drags on over the top past the National Monument of the Resistance, which was constructed on the Plateau de Glier when it became the base of operations for the Mackie Resistance Group. And finally, we have the Col de la Madeleine, which is a mountain defined basically by its length, the sheer distance that the riders have to go to reach the summit. Now, if you start in Aigues Blanches, which they do this year, it is then 28.8 k's to get to the top, with an average gradient of 5.4%, and then the summit at just under 2,000 meters above sea level. However, that average gradient doesn't really tell the whole story. For example, there is a seven kilometer section in the middle of the climb that averages 8%, which in itself would be a pretty decent mountain. And then the final four kilometers are particularly hard, an average gradient there of 8.4%. Now this is the first time that the Col de la Madeleine has been used since 2013. It will actually be the first climb that the riders face on that stage 12 to Alpe d'Huez. So those are our top five climbs from the 2018 Tour de France. Hasn't been an easy job to whistle it down to five, given that there are 26 passes of second category or above at this year's race. And no doubt your top five will differ to ours. Therefore, we would love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, let us know what your top five mountains are for this year's event in the comment section down below. Now don't forget we've got daily highlights of the Tour de France. If you want to catch all of the action from those mountain passes, make sure you head over to our Facebook page for those. We've got our shop up in the corner of the screen right now, a link to it at least, where you can look very July-like in these yellow GCN t-shirts. Uh, and if you haven't yet looked at our preview show with myself and Cy Richardson, you can find that, which gives a lot more details on some of the stages, just down here.